So back in the 19... Oh gosh, when would this have been? This was either the late 1970s or the early 1980s when counterplan debating had moved out of its early stages but wasn't quite where it is today where a lot of things are pretty well understood and pretty, pretty well settled. <laughs> I'm told, and this may be an urban legend, but I'm told that there was an enterprising negative team who came up with the perfect counterplan. And it was a counterplan that you didn't even need to do new research on necessarily as the topic changed. Or definitely not any sort of research that was topic specific. You might have to do updates, but that was it. Here was the counterplan. Ban the plan. And then also send enough food overseas to feed all the starving people in the world. Your advantage was that you saved several hundreds of millions, if not billions, of lives. And it was mutually exclusive because you banned the plan. And so goes the story... Whoever it was who thought this up actually won with it for a while, and there were a lot of affirmatives getting more and more frustrated, but they couldn't put their finger on what was wrong with it. And then one day, an enterprising affirmative team said, the part that proves that our plan is a bad idea is not feeding the world. Feeding the world is something that's perfectly consistent with our plan and something you could do at the same time as our plan. The part that makes our plan look like a bad idea is just that first sentence that says, ban the plan which makes that artificially competitive. And once they had reached that understanding, then they started thinking about, well, what if you could treat the plan, the counter plan, as things that could be broken down still further? What if those were not the unit of analysis? And thus, from that came the permutation. So they would say, our plan doesn't compete with part of your counter plan. Our plan does not compete with feeding the world. So they would say to the judge, if you were, as a thought experiment, just to check and see how much the negatives argument is a reason that our plan's a bad idea, if you think about adopting our plan and sending out food to feed all the starving people in the world, feeding the world is not a reason that you shouldn't do our plan. But that's where all of their impact comes from. So. The way they would phrase it is perm. Do our plan, do this part of the counter plan, and that demonstrates that the counter plan doesn't really compete with the plan. That it's not a reason that the plan is a bad idea in the same sense breathe for the next 30 minutes is a reason that spending 30 minutes at the bottom of a full swimming pool is a bad idea. Well, negatives fought this. At, strenuously and said, we wrote our counter plan, it's not up to you to slice and dice up our counter plan. And when I first got into college debate in the, just past the midpoint of the 1980s, there was a fair amount of controversy still, and there were still a lot of negative teams who, if they counter plan on a regular basis, would say permutations are illegitimate. You have to take the counter plan on its merits, and if the counter plan, as written, competes with the plan, that's, that settles the debate. But the problem was there were too many artificially competitive things that you could do, and a consensus developed that you can do this. So let's go back to some of our earlier hypotheticals. So you're at the city council trying to decide what to do with that $50,000. Well, what if you spent part of the $50,000 on pothole filling and part of the $50,000 on upgrading the ambulances? So the ambulances got somewhat better and you saved a lot of lives. And so some of the potholes got taken care of and the quality of life improves and a lot more people live through whatever severe medical trauma caused them to dial 911 in the first place. Best of both worlds. And what if when you get that offer from Point Loma and in the same mailing you get that offer from Oxford, well, what if you just enroll at Oxford and then you do summers at Point Loma? So every summer you come back and you get a chance, you're, you're closer, you're in the United States, your family can come visit, it takes the edge off the culture shock and the loneliness. And right now, anybody who is an experienced debater, they are waving frantically at this video and saying that's a terrible idea, those are not legitimate permutations. And you're right. Those are not legitimate permutations. Because negatives very early on drew a line in the sand and they said, we only know what the affirmative plan is from the time that it is read in the first affirmative constructive. We only have from then to the end of the debate, less than two hours, to figure out how we're going to beat that plan. And really, we have less time than that because our strategy's got to come together by the end of the second negative constructive. And ideally, it's got to be together in the first negative constructive, which means it is not okay for the affirmative to back off from any part of the plan as originally presented in the 1AC. A permutation that takes away from the original 1AC plan is not a legitimate permutation. Now, look at those permutations that we talked about in the... $50,000 and in the where are you going to go to college debate. 
your plan originally was spend the whole fifty thousand dollars on filling potholes in the street and the counter plan was spend the whole fifty thousand dollars on upgrading ambulances now legitimate permutation might be spend the fifty thousand dollars on filling the potholes in the street and then put a line item in the budget to spend $50,000 as soon as we can find the funding on upgrading the ambulances. So in other words, agree to upgrade the ambulances and just sever out the part that spends this $50,000 on it. So in the near future, as soon as we get some revenues in, in the next budget year, we will take care of the ambulance problem. It's a budget item that is not yet funded. That might be a legitimate permutation. Some people say that it's not legitimate to do your permutation as a time sequence to where you first do the plan and then the counter plan, but that's a slightly more obscure debate. You might say, uh, enroll at Point Loma and be a full-time student at Point Loma, but do summers at Oxford and do at least one study abroad term at Oxford and use the leverage that Oxford offered you a full fellowship to try to talk Oxford into fully funding your trips in the summer and your study abroad semester. Talk with the admissions people there and see if they'd be agreeable to that kind of arrangement. That'd be a legitimate permutation because your original plan, the 1AC plan, go to Point Loma, you still do that in full. You don't take anything away from it, but you take part of the counter plan. You dice it up a little bit. So the first thing you got to know about a permutation is if you try to argue that the plan, that, that parts of the plan and counter plan are the ideal com uh, combination, if you don't include the entirety of the plan as you offered it up in the first affirmative constructive, then negatives are going to argue that that's not legitimate, that makes the plan a moving target, that is you backing away from ground that you formerly occupied, and they're likely to win that argument. I've seen that debate play out over and over again, and your odds of trying to defend your ability to do that are very, very slim, so much so that I would say it's a waste of time and playing the percentages in kind of a naive way to try to win that argument. Another kind of permutation that's not okay is to take something that wasn't in either the plan or the counter plan and add it in as a way to make them, a way to reconcile them. So I don't know, maybe perm, do the plan, so go to Point Loma, and do the counter plan, so go to Oxford, and also apply for grant funding for a private jet so that you can fly back and forth. Well, that's called an intrinsicness permutation. Take something that was in neither proposal to begin with and just abracadabra have it appear out of thin air. Because what you're doing when you're the affirmative and you argue a permutation is you are asking the judge to, as kind of a thought experiment, think through does the plan really demonstrate that, does the counter plan really demonstrate that the plan is a bad idea? So, you know, just imagine simultaneous adoption with some adjustments. And really, in the long term, arguing it a bunch of times, the only ones you're going to get away with are truly legitimate, are 100% of the plan, part or all of the counter plan, and nothing else that was in neither policy in the first place. So that's pretty much what I have to say about permutations considered as a test of competition. There's a lingering issue about if you do a permutation, if you say to the judge, permutation, do the entirety of the plan and part of the counter plan, is that a plan amendment? Are you then defending that? Is that what you're sticking with from then until the end of the debate? The easy answer is no, it's not. It's just a test of competition. It's a way to ask the question, is the counter plan artificially competitive? But that answer is a little bit more complicated, and I'm not going to get to that until the fourth video in this series, because the third video, the one I'm going to do next, I'm going to teach a little bit of a history lesson in how debate has evolved to lay the foundation for the controversy, can you kick out, can a negative kick out a counterplan if it turns out that they are losing the counterplan. So two more videos are coming up, and then we're going to get to the question that I originally thought that I could illustrate and shed some light on. So bear with me.